Faxverse presents Three's Company, What Happened When the Cameras Weren't Rolling. Three's Company was an epic American sitcom in the 70s and 80s, originally starring John Ritter, Joyce DeWitt, and Suzanne Somers. The storyline was about two single girls who were in need of a roommate for their Santa Monica apartment. They offered one room in the place to a guy who fell asleep in the bathtub during their goodbye party to their last roommate. Craziness then ensued episode after episode to the delight of the ABC TV network fans. Three's Company dealt with topics that were relatively taboo for primetime television in that generation. But this approach helped people talk about these issues and better understand them. It was a sitcom based on the British series Man About the House, and it was one of the first USA-based sitcom to portray comical situations through double entendres and innuendo. Joyce DeWitt, Janet Wood in the sitcom, and Suzanne Somers, cast as Chrissy Snow, were the roommates who took in John Ritter, Jack Tripper, to be their rental sharer. The three were household names for the TV fans of the generation. Other cast members who joined them in the show were Norman Fell as the landlord Stanley Rope, Priscilla Barnes as Terry, who was a replacement roommate for Cindy, who was also a replacement for Chrissy Snow, and Richard Klein, Larry Dallas. The title Three's Company was actually a last-minute idea that popped out of nowhere for the name of the show. The pilot was already written, and everything in place except the title of the show. One for the books. Three's Company ran from March 15, 1977 up to the final episode on September 18, 1984. It sustained an episode count of 172 episodes and inspired the creation of two spin-offs, The Ropers and Three's a Crowd. But these two shows really did not rise up to the popularity of the original Three's Company. Famous Actors Who Auditioned for Roles in Three's Company Billy Crystal was one of the actors who auditioned for the Jack Tripper role, but Lady Luck had other plans for him, which also made him famous, which you might already know. Lonnie Anderson auditioned for the Chrissy Snow role, but Destiny diverted her to the sitcom WKRP in Cincinnati as Jennifer Marlowe. She had Emmy and Golden Globe nominations for the role. Priscilla Barnes, who got the Terry role after Cindy was phased out of the show, was scolded by the show producers several times for dyeing her hair in a blonde hue that was not to their liking. Heather Locklear also auditioned after Chrissy left Three's Company. She had Kleenex under her armpits while auditioning because she was sweating too much. Laughter ensued after she left the room because the Kleenex were falling out of her and many people saw that. Needless to say, she didn't get the role. John Larroquette The star of Night Court, John Larroquette, had a role as a police officer in one episode of Three's Company. His role called for him to not have his face seen, but he removed his police hat so the audience knew who he was. Tidbits about Suzanne Summers. Suzanne Summers was lucky to get the Chrissy Snow part. Several actresses auditioned for this part, but the producers were picky and they didn't like anybody. They just happened to review Suzanne's audition tape. They liked what they saw, which was done the day before production began, and they gave her a shot at stardom. And the rest is history. Since Suzanne was a last-minute addition, the three stars did not actually meet and get to know each other until the start of their first taping for the show. Suzanne apparently lied when she said she was 17 when the show started because she had a son who was already 11 at that time. She gave birth at 6. She was obviously already around 28 years old. For whatever reason they might have, the producers wanted Suzanne's character, Chrissy Snow, to have a full formal name connected to Christmas. So they invented the name Christmas Noel Snow. In the original credits, John Ritter crashed his bike because he was focused on a brunette-haired woman passing by. That woman was really Suzanne Somers, who was wearing a brunette wig. Here and there. There are stars in the show, Jack, Janet, and Chrissy. But apparently, Jack is the main character, because he's the only one of the three who was in every episode of Three's Company, 172 episodes in all. When Three's Company ended, John Ritter was also a part of an ABC spinoff called Three's a Crowd. This time, Jack Tripper moved in with his new girlfriend, but it did not fare well with the finicky TV audience. Joyce DeWitt was probably happy with the demise of the spinoff, because as the producers were in the planning stage for Three's a Crowd, they did not keep Joyce in the know. But Joyce accidentally walked into the auditions and wondered what was going on. When she discovered that she was not a part of the show, friction between her and the other cast members rose to a high temperature. That's why John Ritter got a pay of $150,000 per episode. Suzanne Somers, perhaps feeling she was one of the reasons for the show's popularity, demanded the producers up her pay to be at par with that of John. This argument led to a misunderstanding among the cast. They didn't talk to each other after shootings, and due to the friction, Suzanne's Chrissy role was written out entirely. Other Juicy Tidbits 
Three's company actually had three pilots made. The first two were rejected by ABC producers, but the third one got an okay and was aired on March 15, 1977. Composer Joe Raposo of Sesame Street and the Electric Company theme songs fame was hired to compose the theme song of Three's Company. It was an easy transition for Joe to do general patronage jingles for Sesame Street and the Electric Company, and then do the about face to create adulting tunes for Three's Company. The producers had a very bad idea of making Jack, Janet, and Chrissy sing the theme song of the sitcom. Fortunately, they were either out of tune or simply were not cut out to be a singing trio. So the final singers, Ray Charles, not the famous one, his namesake, and Julia Miller were brought on to do the job. Stanley Roper, the fictional landlord character, wasn't all fantasy. He was a real person who lived in Philadelphia who cannot seem to do anything right. After three seasons, Stanley Roper and his wife got to star in their own spinoff, aptly titled The Ropers. Norman Fell, the actor who played Stanley, was assured by the producers that if their own show did not last more than a year, they would go back to Three's company. But The Ropers did slightly well and lasted for a year and a half. Thus, Stanley did not have a chance to go back to Three's company. When The Ropers departed, great actor Don Knotts was brought in to fill the vacuum as the landlord. It was surprising that Don Knotts admitted that he was nervous because Three's company had already gained popularity and the cast were also very funny in their own right. But Knotts was a proven comedy actor, and rightly so. The cast were also equally nervous with such an established actor. There was one actor, Jeff Tambor, who played three extremely different characters on the show. A wealthy man, a psychiatrist, and a dentist. It was weird to know that none of the actors on the show ever noticed that the three characters were portrayed by only one person. In the later seasons of the show, in the opening credits, a child can be seen running up to Janet in the zoo. This made Janet laugh, and the producers liked it so they kept this sequence as part of the opening credits. This child Jason is John Ritter's son in real life. He would later become an actor too, like his dad. He came into his own as Pat Rollins in the famous TV series Raising Dion. One keen-eyed observer in 2001, long after Three's Company had faded from the TV screen, had observed that in one episode, Jack's short shorts did not quite cover properly his boner and kept it out of sight. Human error was something that could not be avoided while filming the episodes of Three's Company. There are many episodes where in a glimpse of an unwanted boom mic or a crew member's extremities making their way into a scene. John Ritter won for Three's Company a Primetime Emmy Award and a Golden Globe Award in 1984, which was the last year of the show. It would be almost 30 years before the three Three's Company stars would reconcile. Suzanne and Joyce made up publicly on the talk show of Suzanne. Ultimately, Suzanne and John made up for lost time before John's death in 2003. What's your favorite Three's Company memory? Tell us about it in the comments below, and be sure to subscribe to Facts First for more videos.